When was the last time you boys went to the supermarket? Oh, God. I'm in a fortunate position being a, in a household of five people, one of whom has not really got much work to do uh, that it's kind of fallen to them to go and do all the shopping. Because it's not, it doesn't make any sense for five of us to expose ourselves to potential <laughs> bugs. So I've not been to the supermarket for probably 12 weeks or, you know, 10 oh, weeks wow. or 11 weeks. Nice. Well, yeah. the supermarket's currently my main source of fun at the minute. So, like, <laughs> I kind of relish every opportunity I get to go and get some food. But I, w- I would be so stressed if I was that poor person getting shopping for a house of five people. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. Well, we, we write a list. Yeah. Uh, a, a very good, no, normally, like, if someone was shopping for our household, there would probably be a bit of a list, but, you know, it would be a lot more footloose and fancy free you know just go in there get some stuff enough stuff for five people to eat but uh yeah we we it's a lot it's a much more regimented thing in fact at time of recording it's sunday and sunday evening is let's all sit down and write a proper list day so that sounds like do you build your whole day around that (laughs) sunday is list day oh you got to replenish after treat day haven't you you have, yeah. It's, it's rest day and list day. All the cupboards are empty now. Yeah. And you've got no more hoisin crispy owl. No. Or fluffy rough. Garlic pudding's oh. running low. All gone. Pork cylinders, forget about it. No. God. Jeez. <laughs> all that's left is 20 cheese omelette, and I don't want that at all. That'd be bad for oh. me. Oh, yeah, you'd be oh, no. farting and plopping. How are you, Ben? I went to a big Tesco for the first time. Well, I've only I've only been to a supermarket twice since lockdown Wait, started. Really? Yeah. Well, I I've got a I managed to get a home delivery. I booked it like a month in advance. Oh, lucky. <laughs> and I managed to get it. And because it's just me, I can survive off that food for you know a couple of months, and it's not a problem. <laughs> so I only usually have to go out. I've been to like a tiny supermarket just to grab a couple of essentials, but that's kind of it. Um, right. And so I went to a big supermarket because I needed some, you know, something more substantial. And I went yesterday morning and I wore a mask for the first time. Mm. Um, and I was really impressed on the road leading up to it, which is all pedestrianized. All of the they'd, they'd put a divider down the middle of the street with stickers on telling you which side to walk on. <laughs> yeah. So they kept people apart. And outside every single one of these shops, there were uh, barricades that you could queue up to get in. And there was a hand sanitization station oh. with, with like hand gel outside of every shop. Wow. And I thought, that is really good. I'm really impressed by this. This bodes very well because the last time I was here, there, there wasn't any of this. And then I walked up to the Tesco, went in the usual entrance And uh, I went in the entrance I went into last time and it was all cordoned off and it was really confusing. And it sort of funneled you towards one of those travelators. And I walked up to it because last time I had to go down the travelator and then queue round the other side and up the travelator to like, you know, queue to get into the supermarket. I was I was about to step onto it and I noticed it was coming towards me. Oh, right. okay. so they've got the travelator going the wrong way because it doesn't usually go in that direction. (laughs) Uh, d- no signage whatsoever. I was like, right, okay. So I turned around. An older couple came in behind me, and they they were also trying to get into the supermarket, and they followed me. So then I went to the other entrance of the supermarket, which is usually the exit, but all the signs on the floor said, no entry, don't go in this way. And so I turned around, and I was like, where am, where am I meant to go? And the old couple said, no, 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 it is this way. <laughs> so I was like, all right, okay then. So I then went down the travelator on that side, um, and then walked round, grabbed a trolley. And then, of course, when I went onto the travelator with the trolley on the other side to queue up, which had been turned off because people are queuing on it, mm. uh, the, the brakes locked up on it. Oh, no. Oh, God, of so course. I had to carry this trolley oh, no. up, up the travelator. And I was so embarrassed because I was the only person with a trolley. But there were no signs. No one was there to tell me what to do. Oh, God. And so I carried the trolley up. And as I was queuing around, I watched no fewer than five people make the same mistake I did where they came in, except they they stood on the travelator and nearly fell over <laughs> because oh, it was coming towards them. Oh, and it's God. just the worst organized thing I'd ever seen. And the, all the Tesco staff just had their back to them. Like, they just didn't care. Like, this was a regular occurrence now. And I don't understand how, how it could go so poorly because someone's going to get hurt, probably. That's mad. Yeah. Well, you can't get sick from coronavirus if you die on an escalator on your way to Tesco. So. Maybe that's it. They're just trying to thin us out. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. It's the ultimate safety measure. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, it was fucking absurd. Which they just well, nearly saw several people nearly just fall over. <laughs> nearly fall over. Well, could, it, I mean, it being Mikey's only uh, or, or main source of fun, it sounds like you'd have even more fun going there, Mikey. There's all kinds of obstacles and you know, there's probably true. like an Indiana Jones boulder at some point. And mm-hmm. I could, I could sounds- turn it into a naked jungle run. Oh, you could. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> that's, 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 add an extra oh, element. less hygienic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. I'll, I'll just smother myself in um, hand sanitizer. I want to be pure and just roll yeah. around, scoot around all over the place and dip, Beautiful. dive, dodge in and out of trolleys. There you go. Yeah. The things those employees must have seen, though. Oh, God. It's well, a guy who's carried a trolley up. <laughs> It's just like going, it's going back to like some Neanderthal times where people are just savagely trying to make their way through this this clusterfuck yeah. of a place and yeah. don't know what to do and just using their their bare brute force to get through it. Pick up that trolley. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just people getting on travelators the wrong way, oh. nearly falling over, and then going oh oh, and n- not even nobody even turned their head that was working right next to them. <laughs> Just, it just seems so backwards. Out, coming from that wonderful forward-thinking street outside <laughs> to the fucking saw house. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Poddy. It's the official Vidiots podcast. Damn. It's a conversational podcast where we take some questions from you at home and obey the law of the three ers, where everybody brings a, a thing, thing along to, to talk, talk about. about. I'm Ben. I'm Peter. And I'm Michael. Mm. Mm. How, how's it going? It's good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's fine. It's easy like a Sunday yeah. morning, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a difficult Sunday morning. A little bit, yeah. It's just a Sunday morning. <laughs> ass Sunday morning. It's nice. easy like ass Sunday morning. Yeah. Ass Sunday morning. That's yeah. it. Oh. Wow. Can you tell we all just woke up? <laughs> Jesus. No. What? what? Stop it. Stop uh, it. How How are your Saturdays, boys and boys? Or girls? Or girls. I did a big sleep in and then... Went to socially distance, see some friends. It was mm. weird as fuck. <laughs> like, oh, nice. Because it's been three months of not really, I haven't seen anyone other than Claudia. And seeing faces I recognize, it was like a weird, surreal moment of like, whoa, whoa, what's going Whoa, I can talk to you. And it's yeah. different and it's new. And I'm not doing it via a quiz over Zoom. <laughs> That's become yeah, right. the default method of communication at the minute. And it's just nice to see a face and see those lips wobble. <laughs> That's what I love about people. Mm, That's lips. the best thing about social interaction, seeing those lips wobble. <laughs> How are you guys? Do you have a good Saturday? Saturday? Yeah, it's uh, fine. Yeah. No, yeah. No, nothing to report, really. Oh. Went on a, on a little stroll um, to a, a little waterfall nearby. I saw that picture. Looked beautiful. Yeah. Mm. Just, Did you chase it? Oh, no. Don't go chasing waterfalls. No. Okay. I, I prefer to chase either rivers or lakes because I'm sort of used to that. Right. Yeah. That's fair. Did you see Jason there as well? Because uh, people often confuse uh, Jason for being near the waterfalls. Jason. No, no, no sign of Jason, I'm afraid. Okay. Yeah. Don't go, comma, Jason waterfalls. Don't go, Jason waterfalls. <laughs> Miss you. Come back to us. What what are we doing? Hello? Hello? What's happening? Are we okay? Yeah, we're fine. We're, good? we're fine. Excellent. Okay. Well, I'm just going to move things along a little bit. Maybe Aww. you should. I'd like to thank everybody who has very, very kindly donated and supported us this week on Pod Squad. These Podron Squadron members have decided to go above and beyond and support us financially, and it's very, 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 very gratefully received. If you too would like to support us on Pod Squad and get a shout out at the beginning and the end of the show, you can donate three pounds or more to streamlabs.com forward slash podiots donations. Now, a little disclaimer, we have had a few donations trickle through, and it's lucky I checked on the old <gasps> forward slash vidiots official donation link. That's exclusively for live streams now. After this week, I will no longer be checking it. So if you would like to join Pod Squad, make sure you're donating at forward slash podiots 
donations. That will be the only place. Imagine how can, sad uh, it would be a shout out. to have a pod pod squad name just fall into the ether forever, oh, just lost. Oh. echoing to itself. Bon, 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 <laughs> oh no, it's be so now. sad. <laughs> and we don't want Go that to forever. happen, so please donate responsibly, use the right link. Yes, donate responsibly. Just like <laughs> all these people who donated responsibly. We start off with a little bit of Monica. Kill Boy mm-hmm. Loves Babs. Beal <laughs> New Cannon. Nice. <laughs> I was a succulent Chinese meal. <laughs> Gooey bug spittoon. Tidiots. Man, what Ben tied up in a hoodie. <laughs> oh, no, fucking hell. <laughs> Javier Ramirez. Vidiots in Vegas with a very, very generous one. And they say, I'm 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 starting the Vidiots Go to Vegas fund. Let, oh. Let's get to Vegas, boys. <laughs> let's do it. Yeah, if you take me this time. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Lord Brotovich to finish. Uh also Podiddly Squadiddly Do. Garlic and chips for life, ask them. <laughs> it's what it says. Not go and ask, <laughs> ask them. Uh Mr. Black. Willem's Willy will win whatevs. Kevin from Con. Ah, Millie Lemons. Uh, awesome Fox 42. Cheese Fondue Penguin. Sexagin Tuple Non Upple. I don't know if there's actual words in there <laughs> or if it's just nonsense. But uh, And we can just ditch petrol. That's weighing in on the cheese petrol debate. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, it rages on. It rages on. Uh, we've also got I don't know DJing. What's MIDI? I I need to make this bigger. I I, I quill Nederland Shoren. Right? Am I reading that right? Uh, I, yeah. I th- I quill Nederland's Shoren or Nederland's Horen. Oh, that's a tough one to read. Peter's Polish furry porn. Thank you very much for the generous donation. Polish autocorrect to Welsh. <laughs> Who knew? Mm. Is that better, Ben? Ha ha. Keep up the great content. Much love. Kisses. Kisses. Thank you, Peter's Polish, but furry porn there. Mm. Windy Miller. Billy Ray Bumpus. Alan Claw. R.I.P. George. Uh, R.I.P. George Floyd. Nick Knack Paddywhack. Give a dog a booner. Penile Dementia 489, oh. Uncle Fester's Throbbing Cock, and Sean Anthony 96. Thank you very much for the very generous donation there. Uh, but we've uh, we've also got the uh, additional Naughty Vidiots official donators here too. Yes. Are you, uh, you guys want to take one of these each? Yeah. Sure. Mikey, Mikey you, you, it's your turn again, son. Oh, I get the best one of the lot. Keith Chegwin's Cock and Balls. Nice. Unofficial Vidiot's Pod Crumb. Oh, f- pod, no. pod Cum B? Pod Cum B. Pod Cum B. Pod Cum. Desi does Bon 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 Bons. And, uh, and, tr- and tr- all together. Trunters, 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 Combo Meal. Hooray! We did it. I'm Fantastic. sure that synced up wonderfully over I, I Discord. Bet it's, I bet it sounded great. Oh. Just a reminder, it's forward slash Podiots Donations, streamlabs.com forward slash Podiots Donations. We will no longer be checking the Vidiot's official link after this week. Thank you, everybody, so much. But that's not all, Peter. That's not all. Uh, so ordinarily, we, uh, as a three, we tend to split that money every sometimes every episode, depending on how much we've received or maybe maybe every month or whatever. Um, but, uh, we've decided, uh, this week that we would like to split the money, take our own shares, and then immediately not take our own shares. Uh, we're going to donate them to a relevant, uh, Black Lives Matter related charity. Um, because, you know, we shouldn't be taking money this week, uh, or this fortnight <laughs> mm, yeah. when such things are going on elsewhere in the uh, in the world so stay safe everyone whether you're in the usa or in a different nation uh protesting and uh yeah we think that's the right thing to do so uh that's that's what we're going to do yeah and yeah. yeah i think it's 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 yeah, i think it's it's a horrible thing that's happening at the minute but i do hope it does you know finally bring some light to just how fucking awful it is to yeah. be black um and the kind of persecution they, they face and I'm, I'm i'm glad it's getting like worldwide worldwide kind of vision at the minute and it, I, I really i'd really do have faith that this will lead to some final real change for for everyone but 
Um, that is the reason why I, I made us record a little bit early today is because I'm going to a protest this afternoon. So Oh, excellent. You know, I'm, uh, uh, but that'd be nice to you know be out there and show some solidarity and also be able to sh- throw some money at the cause and, and hopefully, hopefully everything will be all right. I, uh, I recently watched um, one of the various uh, experiments that Jane Elliott did with the brown eyes and blue eyes thing. I don't know if you, if you guys know about that. No. Um, it started, she was a, a primary school teacher. I will prefix this with some people say that Jane Elliott is, uh, she's, she's mostly, you know, a really good voice for change. Um, but like, I think on occasion she's sort of used sort of incorrect terminology and things like that. So she's not, she's not, I was about to say whiter than white, uh, ironically, but, uh, she's not, you know, she's not the, the perfect, uh, civil rights campaigner, but I think she's, her, her heart is certainly in the right place. In any case, uh, she was a primary school teacher um in i think maybe the sort of the 60s uh, or 70s and she did an experiment with her class uh i think all of her class were like middle class white americans they were sort of uh, maybe 6 year olds or something like that and she did an experiment where she said right we're going to uh, see what it's like to be treated differently because of a part of your body that you can't change and so she split the class into whether they had brown eyes or blue slash green eyes and, uh, you know, treated them in, in, in a completely different way. And I think at lunchtime, she swapped it around the other way. But, you know, she would make them sit in a separate place. She would she would sort of talk down to them. Uh, I think she gave, like, cookies and milk to one group and water to the other and stuff like that. Um, and it was this really eye-opening ex- experiment. And uh, there's videos of her doing it to a much older group as well, like a college class, wh- who have, like, signed contracts to allow her to be, like, even more sort of, you know, discriminatory against them and uh yeah it's a really eye-opening thing so you should watch it if you Hmm. if you get the chance if you just search for brown eyes blue eyes jane elliott it's very uh it's a very good model yeah yeah interesting give that a watch yeah well as uh peter and i have have expressed on numerous outlets and obviously this is extended to to videos as well we completely uh stand with the black lives matters uh black lives matter sorry movement and, uh, and and as Mikey said, we sincerely hope that it brings about some meaningful change. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Let's start with uh, some questions, shall we, Michael? <laughs> Let's go from quite serious to quite ridiculous. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> oh, boy. Hold on. We start with a question from Kev, at Kev Master. Who would win in a straight fight, Barbara Piss or Demo Dick Machinko? Oh God! So oh, we've probably got probably the two toughest. Yeah. Why, why do you have to make me make such decisions at this? <laughs> why do this I, time? Why do our favourites have to fight? <laughs> I don't want them to fight. I think well, Dick, Dick Machinko is just this this man of brute force. I, mm-hmm. I, I don't know if I'd say cunning, but he's got he's got military smarts. Yeah, <laughs> but, but, he has. But Barbara Pierce is just this juggernaut, this this piss juggernaut. <sighs> And she's unstoppable. I, I think Ben. I think. What, what do you think? What, what, what what's Barbara Piss's biggest biggest thing she's got going for her? Well, she can't die, which is oh, a, that's pretty. You yeah. know, that's quite a that's quite a big point in effect. I, f- I feel like I almost need to abstain from this whole discussion as that's she true. is my daughter. Um, but yeah, she's she's literally unkillable. <laughs> so that's something to bear in mind. Um, She's proficient with multiple weapon types, mm. uh, as, as she has a, a sort of expressed over the last few months. She is a proficient hand-to-hand combatant as well. Um, obviously, you're not going to do very well with a sword or a club against a gun, and Dick's very good at guns. <laughs> but maybe if they fist fought, things might be a little more even, you know? Well, yeah. also... Just because she's unkillable, that doesn't necessarily help. Because if Dick somehow did get, you know, did manage to get her down uh, onto the onto the ground and think that he's killed her, if that asshole was still twitching, he would check the bodies. <laughs> um, I think no, he would just re- repeatedly pummel her not quite dead corpse. Oh my god! Uh, or yeah. Not corpse. Just for the rest of time, just sat yeah. there. Like, bah, 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 bah. Oh no! What's that? Uh, what's the Greek? The Greek boy who had his had his eyes pecked out oh, the, every day, and the they eagle, grew back. The eagle guy, yeah, I don't know yeah, uh, that, that one. fella. I don't Artemis want that fate for someone. 
I don't want that fate, uh, that fate for Barbara. I can't. I can't even. Can't even think about it. You've also got to remember, also uh, on like in Dick's favor, that he seemingly has diplomatic immunity in that he is never held accountable for his war crimes. Yeah, literal war crimes. <laughs> so it's true. No, no one's coming to check on his body. You know, to see if that asshole's still twitching. Uh, for his crimes, Prometheus is punished by Zeus, oh, who bound him with it. chains and sent an eagle to eat his immortal liver every day, which Ooh. then grew back every night. Oh, oh God. Oh, yeah. So literally the, one of the most famous Greek names that's yeah. used in popular culture all the time. Which one is it? I don't know. Yeah, it's that one, you know. The eagle one who has it, his eyes eaten. Liver lad. <laughs> yeah, you know. Not even close. I think uh, it might be the start of a beautiful friendship. Yeah, maybe like it's like these two titans going together, and as they start fighting, they both start realizing just how similar they are. They're, yeah. they're both these expertly trained professional murderers and fighters, and mm-hmm. that's what makes them come together to form the ultimate crime fighting force. Where oh, they God, can you imagine <laughs> the world at the mercy of these two? <laughs> Dick and Bart. No, Dick and Piss. Yeah, there we go. Dick Piss. <laughs> Dick and no, Piss. No, I don't want Dick Piss. <laughs> the one-off fight tonight on the on the Plop channel. Dick Only and on piss. pay-per-view. <laughs> I think it's Dick Piss 37. Oh, no. Oh, I, th- <laughs> I think if it was, if, it, if there had to be a winner... I keep going for Dick, I think. I just think he's more brutal, he's more unforgiving, and yeah, the guns are a big help. Yeah, be I think help. you're right, Ben, that he wouldn't be able to fully kill Barbs, but I think mm. he would maybe for eternity in a Prometheus kind of way just be and- checking the bodies, that asshole's still twitching. <laughs> oh, what a commitment Never for him. Stop. I've got to abstain, I can't, I can't get involved in a vote. That's fair. Well, rest in peace, Barbs, you've, 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 rip, you've bit the bullets. Babs. You've bit Dick's bullet. You've bit Dick. There we go. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I, I, rest in piss. I did realise just as I said that, Barbara Piss literally fights otherworldly demons and dragons and monsters. But She has killed gods, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, what, what's, a, what, what's a god to a dick? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Well, congratulations. Wow. There we go. Thank you very much, Kev. Who would like to do a thing? Uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. Uh, I feel like I've been first the last couple of times. Oh well, I'll go. I'll I'll chuck along me thing then. Oh, okay. ch- chuck along. I'll chuck ch- along me thing <laughs> to me oh. to you. Uh, right I've got I've got a very very silly little light thing on my, on my plate today. Hooray! I like those. Yeah. It's like an aperitif. A pe- oh, oh, we're sorry. sorry what? Your pardon. <laughs> Bless you. An aperitif. Yes, I like bit holidays, bacon, <laughs> and, and aperitifs. Aperitifs. Hmm. A, are you saying a pair of teeth? No, I'm not saying a pair of teeth. I'm saying <laughs> an aperitif. It's a. It's like a. Isn't it like a little drink you have at the start of a meal? It's like oh, a little. Okay. Oh, cr- Christ! I don't know. I'm gonna. How do you even spell that? A p e r t i f. Aperitif. Oh, oh, aperitif. Uh, An alcoholic drink taken before a meal to sim- stimulate the ap- to simulate the appetite. <laughs> oh, it tastes like beef. Oh, and then oh shit, just dropped my phone. Sorry. Oh Jesus. <laughs> I'm just gonna send Got my thing the, on it. The first picture comes up in Google Images for aperitif. It's very bizarre. While that sends, have you ever been in a bookshop? (laughs) Yeah, oh God. It's a hedgehog made out of cherries. What is that? Cherries, olives, tomatoes, cheese? Is that crap? Tweet tweet that really quick. That has to be tweeted, yeah. Mm. There's a lot of effort that's gone into that. Definitely. That's all the food groups in one. Is that a lemon at the bottom as well? Yeah, with a face drawn on it. What, What is this? None of these foods feel like they should be near each other. It's a... Snack hedgehog. Oh. <laughs> oh, Mikey, no. what was your weird question just then? <laughs> have you ever been in a bookshop? Notice- oh, yes. Yes, <laughs> I have. have. <laughs> the end. <laughs> That's it. That's my thing. Isn't that weird? You've really- got a question. Have you ever been in a bookshop? Yes. <laughs> there we go. Oh, well, thanks for stealing my thunder. God. <laughs> well, have you ever been in a bookshop, noticed a book with a funny title and thought to yourself, if only there was a yearly prize for the book with the weirdest title, so a farty ah. boy on a comedy podcast could talk about them. Well, you're in I've luck. I thought that. 
Well, you know, I've always, well, always long thought Well, Peter, that. you're in luck. Doesn't matter no. if you think it or not. You're getting it. <laughs> so welcome to the world of the Diagram Prize for the oddest title of the year, which is a literary award, and it's given annually to a book with the most notably unusable title, un- unusable, unusual <laughs> title. Well, some of these titles are a bit unusable. Can we enter this? <laughs> yes, I think yes. Uh, the, one of the rules of the award is is that it can't be designed to be funny. It's kind of just got. Oh, a, well, how can you know? I, that's that's what I think. That's one of the weird things about this because as the years go on, these these titles get weirder and weirder to a point where it's like mm, someone's trying to be funny here. But I, mm-hmm. I think with a bit of smarts, we could probably outsmart them. We could. I don't know. The Vidiot's Compendium could have a pretty good good title. Yeah, I reckon so. Because otherwise, it sounds like it's just the equivalent of the Razzies, where some good-meaning person has been awarded, you know, a trophy for. Wow, your book has a shit title, doesn't it? <laughs> Here you go. And it's like, well, hang on, I didn't intend for that. Oh, I Whereas if people are actively trying, then it's a little less mean-spirited. I, I, I don't, I don't view the award as mean-spirited. I think it's just a nice little. It's a nice little. Oh, that because the, the the judge actually maybe this does make it sound worse, but they judge the book <laughs> entirely on the title. They don't read the book. Oh God, they judge it by its cover <laughs> because. I think there's literally in the in the, in the article I read about this. It says like they don't want uh, the contents to sway their opinion or get them attached to a book. Oh right, <laughs> so, you wouldn't want context, would you? No, no, you d- you just want that lovely, lovely title. This is, after all, the award for the uh, oh, what was it again? The oh, oh the oddest what, title, unusual, <laughs> the oddest title of the year. So it's not about the Amazing. oddest book. We're all we're all about reading covers here and not delving any deeper than that. Okay, sorry, Michael, for doubting you. Tell me all about it. Well, we'll start with the first award winner in the year of 1978. Proceedings of the Second International Workshop on Nude Mice. So that's obviously... That, <laughs> that's, that's nice. You know, that's, obviously, that's like obviously a science journal kind of thing. It's just a bit funny because you yeah, need mice. But I, I, I'm, I'm, my main favourite thing about that is just it's the Second International Workshop on Nude <laughs> mm-hmm. Mice. Do you know what nude mice is or are? are? Uh, it says, um, so the book is basically all about medical studies done using lab mice with inhibited immune systems. I'm not sure where nude comes into that. <laughs> Maybe that's just a, a term used in the industry for they've got no immune system. They're yeah. nude. Oh, they've mm. got a nude mouse here. It's covered in fur, but my God, he's very exposed. Mm. Mm. And I'm not, so I'm basically going to run through my favourites of of the running of the entire history because let's be fair, there is some stinkers. So I just found some, okay. some nice, pleasant ones. In 1980, we had the joy of chickens. Which <laughs> oh. is just so nice. I, I, that is nice. I fully agree that chickens are joyful. And it, that was quite literally just a book focused entirely on different breeds of chicken. And I think yeah, if you're a chicken fan here, you, you see that title, Joy Chickens, you're going to be drawn to it. Is there, because I've seen the title of a book that's that's been going around in meme form for a while. Mm. I don't know if it's in here. It's called Ducks and How to Make Them Pay. No, what? <laughs> but it's about animal husbandry for raising ducks wow. rather than sort of revenge against ducks, which is what it sounds like. <laughs> ducks and how to make, the, oh, so it's how to make money from ducks. Yeah. Oh, that's ducks amazing. And how to make them pay. Wow. Oh my God. I want to read that now. I want to raise some ducks. There is a good animal husbandry one towards the end though, which I think is actually my favorite okay. of this entire thing. Last chance at love, terminal romances. Oh, <laughs> fuck. It takes a bit of a turn in 1981, but. <laughs> I don't like that one. I've got a rough idea of what that might be about. Yes. And that's, yeah. That's it's a sad an, one. It's a nice self-help book, but my God, that mm. title, Last Chance at Love. Thanks. Yeah. 1984, we saw The Book of Marmalade, its antecedents, its history, and its role in history today, in the world today. I think. The Book of Marmalade. <laughs> its antecedents, its history, and its role in the world today. Oh. I, I'm curious now because I've got a book that's literally called Salt, and which is all about <laughs> the history of salt, its importance in history. But I know for a fact salt has been a very important sub, uh, substance for many millennia. I just don't know if marmalades had the same impact. <laughs> I don't know if it, if it warrants it. I don't know. It, dads love it. Dads love marmalade and so do bears, little small bears wearing hats. Yeah, yes, exactly. Actually, I, maybe, the, maybe, maybe this is my favourite in the list. 1985 was graced with the juggernaut that is... Natural bust enlargement with total power. How to increase the other 90% of your mind to increase the size of your breasts. 
What? <laughs> that is jeez. That, <laughs> that is a book about um, br- b- breast enlargement through positive thinking. So quite literally, mm. think think your boobs bigger. <laughs> yeah, there is a whole thing about that. There's also I can't remember. I'm sure we've talked about this, but it might not have been on a podcast. I once found a really well, a pretty creepy YouTube channel where there were just videos that you watch for like 12 minutes at a time, and apparently it sends out like acoustic sounds through your headphones that can affect your body and make your dick grow bigger and stuff (laughs) or your tits grow bigger how many hours did you spend watching these peter did it work there were only three videos and it didn't work i I think my dick got smaller oh no yeah i mean i feel like i must have brought that as a thing i remember just stumbling across it um (laughs) because i think the guy who owned the channel commented on either a triple jump or a video it's video really oh god (laughs) yeah um (laughs) Oh, you're you're in you're in the presence of a legend! Wow. Or he, he might not have been the uploader. He might have uh, had a favorites playlist of that stuff. But in any case, I found it through a commenter. Um, <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. Oh wow, God! I, I'm going to hunt down those videos now and just give them, spend a whole weekend with headphones on watching them. Yeah. Jeez. 1989 saw how to shit in the woods: an environmentally sound approach to a lost art. Quite wow! Literally. Yeah, that's that actually sounds like quite a good book. It's about responsible treatment of one's waste in rural areas. When it's just how to shit in the woods, you think that it's probably a metaphorical title, and then the subtitle <laughs> is how to shit in the woods. Basically, yeah. <laughs> I like how it's a lost art. Yeah, like monks absolutely perfected the craft <laughs> at some point, and then it, it's like um, the 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 bloody oh the fucking Romans with the. The, the oh, fucking the concrete. There we go. Lost our, <laughs> lost it for years, and now we're only just learning to shit in the woods again. I think no. I think that's quite a good book because I mean I, I imagine well people just piss up trees and that, and I think in our in our past generations, well I mean many many generations ago, we literally had to shit in the woods, and I guess we we mastered it. We found all the best ways of doing it, best places, and that's all forgotten knowledge now. Yeah. What was it called again? How to shit in the woods: an environmentally res- responsible approach. To lost art. Sorry, my God, that was words. Let me do that again. <laughs> How to shit in the woods: an environmentally sound approach to a lost art. Yeah. A lost. I'm going to see if I can get you a copy, Mike. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! This uh, this can't be the next video. I can't have myself shitting on camera. <gasps> Third edition, huh? Okay. Wow. So it's it's done well. Oh, oh my Michael, God. I'm buying you a copy of this. The cover is amazing. <laughs> yeah, I've just send it in Discord. If you can get this one exactly, then. <laughs> I will I will read that thing from top to tail. Let me just let that finish. God, this, okay. this cover that you must be sending on Discord must be very high definition because you went super yeah, robot your, from it. <laughs> your audio quality just fell out of the world. Oh, no, no. That's just my internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a really small pixelated image you've sent. <laughs> Oh wow, what a great title. Why is he upside that seems like the, exactly the wrong way to shit in the woods. <laughs> well, I think if you look at that that cover and you say, "Wow, that's me." And uh, this book will let you you fix it. Well, it's it's a lost art, isn't it? Mm. You know, of course it's going to look alien to us because that's that is peak peak <laughs> performance. Oh my god, there. Mikey, I think you found the audiobook version because at the bottom it says read by Christine Havam. Oh my oh, god. I think wow. they did an audio it might be on Audible everybody. <laughs> oh my god, there you go. Holy Holy shit. Use your Audible credits. If we had a sponsor, it'd probably be Audible and you'd use it on that, but we don't. So yeah. thanks, Amazon. <laughs> Mikey, when you get a moment, million. fire your address over to me. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, well, we're go- I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be doing a reading of How to Shit in the Woods. Thank you, Ben. 1992 saw How to Avoid Huge Ships, a book with advice to pleasure boaters on the dangers of shipping lanes. Oh. I just think quite a nice little title on How to Avoid Huge <laughs> Just how to avoid things that you can't really miss, to be <laughs> yeah, honest. How to avoid the, <laughs> literally the biggest man-made thing in the water. <laughs> 1993 saw American Bottom Archaeology. Yay. Let's go digging yeah. in bums. <laughs> N- 1994, my birth year, I think obviously the most exciting year, was uh, Highlights on the History of Concrete. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> And I skip a few years and we jump straight forward to 2003. And I think from here, I think like it just, I think books just reached their element. They, like the last 10, 15 years has been the best years for books in all history. Because in 20, 2003, we see the big book of lesbian horse stories. Oh, the big book. There's <laughs> wow. a lot of them. Oh yeah, I mean it's 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 a collection of eight 
past uh, eight <laughs> novels from different decades, all involving lesbian romance and horses. Which I think right. is uh, beautiful. Okay, the horses aren't involved in the romance. I really are they? hope not. I think it's just horsey girls loving other horsey girls, but not. Uh, okay, okay. That's, that's wholesome, yeah, that one. Yeah. 2005 saw people who don't know they're dead, how they attach themselves to unsuspecting bystanders and what to do about it. What? <laughs> what? what? I want to know what that one's do you, about. Do you want to guess what that's about? So people who don't know they're dead. And what was the subtitle? Uh, how they attach themselves to unsuspecting bystanders and what to do about it. I, I mean, is it about dead. ghosts? You're pretty much right. It's it's about okay. dead spirits who took up residence in bodies that did not belong to them. Oh, wow. We needed a whole book on that one. Oh, yeah. Huh? I was trying to th- think of some sort of, you know, as, again, as though it was some kind of metaphor. But no, it <laughs> is about people who don't know they're dead. That's the, the best thing about these. It's not very artful. It's just pure <laughs> it's so fact. literal. All of them are so literal. Mm. In 2006, for the for the for, our, for the uh, nature hunters out there, we had the stray shopping carts of eastern North America, a guide <laughs> yeah. to field identification. <laughs> wow. I, I feel like that's got to be quite a, a tongue in cheek book because to to write a whole book about abandoned shopping carts, you've got to you've got to have a sense of humour, surely. I wouldn't be surprised if it was a, a sort of a photography book with just lots of artful shots of abandoned shopping carts. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's in black and white with like a forest behind it. Wow. You yeah. say that, but there are weirder hobbies. There could be like a whole sort of niche community of people who go and I like train spotting. They just go and identify shopping carts. <laughs> uh, I, I, would, I, I would like it if like after they've took, took a photo or noted it down, they, they rescue the cart and put it back where it belongs. Yeah. <laughs> I think one of the... There's a sanctuary somewhere. <laughs> I think one of the Dick and Dom Neighbours Cat VTs that we watched while we were like setting up Worst Games Ever once where we went to like... Pangborn or wherever he was standing on a bridge going oh look this is the river in Pangborn look in there there's all sorts of oh there's a, some old coke cans there there's a plastic box oh there's, uh, there's a few sorts of there's a pram and then he went but no shopping trolley oh and then he suddenly goes oh no wait there's one over there look there's there there's a shopping trolley and he finds one <laughs> I want to see the the high octane documentary series that follows a bunch of enthusiasts who track down shopping trolleys like uh, Ice Road Truckers or Shipping Containers or whatever it is. Storage Wars. I don't know. (laughs) Oh, I want to see that. Trolley Hunters. (laughs) Yes. Speeding around car parks. Shit, we found one. Skid in. Oh my God. Get it. Get it. It's a Walgreens one. My God. (laughs) (laughs) And a change of pace. 2010 saw... Managing a dental practice, the Genghis Khan way. <laughs> I go- I- a pair of teeth. <laughs> I googled this book, and everyone like it's it's all it is is quite literally a book on how to manage a dental practice, but no reviews. There's there's no like mention of how it differs in style. What makes it the Genghis Khan way? It's like, hmm. I mean, that's how you make someone read your book is make them figure Isn't- out yeah. what makes it so Genghis Khan-y. Don't people say about Genghis Khan that he essentially sired half of Europe? Like we're all like fifty percent of Europe is dis- descended from him because yeah. he just ran around Europe bonking everybody. Yeah. Um, so we're using so, that approach in the world of dentistry. Just yeah, exactly. Yeah. Bonk all your patients. I, I don't think that's good. No, no. that's not good. <laughs> that's not- <laughs> well, in, in a more pleasant tone, we've got twenty twelve and gobbling proofing one chicken's coop. <laughs> wow okay and it, i hope that's a literal one yeah well i mean in a similar vein to all the rest ones um this is a book written by fairy hunter reginald bakley oh. and it offers practical instructions to clear your home and garden of these unsettling inhabitants and banish them from your chicken cup coop and ch- kitchen cupboard forever god well, oh, for fuck's sake like, imagine being a grown fucking adult <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm just fucking imagine your existence going through life like that. And actually that's that's so bizarre because it's one thing and it's still completely crazy to uh in in a more uh sort of happy um almost naturalist kind of way think oh well maybe there's fairies in my garden I don't know there might be. I mean there's not but maybe there is maybe there's fair you know that's just a sort of oh they're a they're a happy little resident but to actually think Oh, those bloody fairies before the goblins have been eating my chickens. <laughs> you know, you've turned something that 
despite being fictional, whichever way you look at it, it could at least be, you know, something for your children to enjoy or whatever. You've turned it into an extra flipping chore for your farm, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. Got to fix the fucking goblin Goblins. fence now. Oh, no, the <laughs> goblin fence is down. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I've just inventing f- extra work. Spend all night reading fucking tomes again. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> the only way that I can get my head around this is if they're a bullshit scam artist. I mean, yeah, probably, maybe. most likely. I'm, let's just quickly... I'm going to look on Amazon. It's okay on goodreads.com. It's got three and a half stars at 92 wow. votes. Help is on the way. In the, yeah, 92 I, votes. I mean, it's got some pretty good... 210 pages long as well, so this isn't a brief overview. This is an in-depth uh, guide. How big's the font, though? <laughs> it's really big. 88. <laughs> Are there any low? Are there any low reviews there? Actually, yeah. I'm well. I'm going to go crackly for a second while I look for reviews because I'm sending a picture. Okay, oh God, he has. He literally just <laughs> yeah, did. Yeah, he really did. He just tapped out of his internet to Google something. People at home won't be able to hear that, but we can. That's so funny. I want to know if there's a whole series of the. Oh my God, what is this? Is this an <laughs> illustration? I, I don't know if it's from the book, but it must be some kind of fan art, at least. Be gone, fairy. <laughs> squawk, but squawk. I only wanted to make your dreams come true. And there's a sad fairy. Squawk. Look at that chicken between his legs. Yeah, it looks it like does, his it's, oh my God. it's quite literally a cock, isn't it? It is a cock. Oh, God. I don't yeah. know if there's a whole series. So this is how obviously how to goblin proof your chicken coop. But is there anything mm. on, you know, uh, salting your cattle so that the vampires can't get them? Or yeah, oh, you know, yeah. trying to make your ducks pay. Yeah. Okay, so I've just found a two star review uh, on Goodreads.com. This is by Horus, who has the avatar of a cat. <laughs> okay. Okay. This was left on August 16, twenty nineteen. This book is intended to be a light hearted conceit of a fairy hunter's advice. Certainly the author demonstrates quite clearly as the essays progress that he may not be quite sane himself and so some of his attitude should be laughable i couldn't help but think while reading this how sir terry pratchett would have handled this subject i could see the same book being written by one of his one of his Discworld characters in a light-hearted and crazy, crazy way that'd be delightful and, delightful and funny. Unfortunately, despite the fiction of the subject, and possibly due to the times in which we now live, I found that I took the book, especially the first essay, in a way that almost in opposition to what was likely intended. I only became somewhat bemused most of the way through the book when a particular essay on love illustrated the author's cluelessness. So read in your own way. So... <laughs> I mean, why would you stick wow. with it for that long? If the first essay was you were looking at it thinking, "God, this guy's crazy. This is stupid." <laughs> they got they they got as far enough to realize, "Oh wait, no." Oh, wait, okay. Mm-hmm. This is this is a very short review, but now it's got me even more interested. It had a lot of potential, but turned out to be cocky ramblings. Some of it didn't make a lot of sense, and things like gnome and leprechaun recipes were a bit disturbing. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? It told you how to cook. Yeah. Right, so this guy is raising chickens, but he's given recipes for gnomes. Well, I think it's literally like, you know, soup a la leprechaun. It's to, it'd be little chunks of hell? leprechaun in your soup. How can you, how can that happen though? I can, again, I can understand someone looking out of their window and thinking that they've just seen a goblin in the chicken coop. <laughs> but how can you think that you've caught one and that you're cooking with it right now? What is he cooking with? Has he gr- grabbed a child or something? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Well. Um, um, okay, I'm looking at... No- All I can find are gnome cookies. Uh, um, gnome also appears to be an acronym for a recipe management application. <laughs> this is a strange coincidence, by the way, because my thing is about... Um, mythological beings um so it's oh. funny we'll get to that Man. well we got one last book this is the 2016 winner i think like i think this is the most charming in my opinion mm-hmm. the commuter pig keeper a comprehensive guide to keeping pigs when time is your most precious commodity <laughs> <laughs> wow. this is a practical guide to looking after a small herd of pigs <laughs> right. outstanding okay uh and times you can just but you can want your just- pigs Feed him in the morning before you go to work, and then go to work, and then when you come back, well, you, you know, just chuck in the body of a leprechaun, and the pigs are happy all day. Then, yeah, yeah, just yeah exactly. Easy. It. And yeah. there we go. Thanks for joining me on a whirlwind of like forty years of of good reads. Magical. Thank you, Michael. Well, that was wonderful. Thank you, Mikey. And would you boys like a question? 
Yes, please. Mm-hmm. We've got Maxi Bash at Maxi at Max underscore Bash on Twitter who wants to know what do you think is the weirdest thing about Britain compared to the rest of the world? The weirdest thing. Oh, oh God. I, well, I don't like to a lot of people, the way we drink our milk is quite savage. Because <laughs> I think tea traditionally is just you put it in the water, you dunk it, you let it brew, and then that's it. Obviously, I think at some point we introduced milk into the process. Mm-hmm. I, I think well, I think it makes sense for our brews of tea, but I, I, I kind of like, I get queasy at the thought of Americans or whatever thinking we dip green tea or peppermint tea into a mug oh. and dunk some tea, uh, some milk into it. So, oh, yeah. what are you guys doing? Or pour it into Long Island iced tea. <laughs> oh, oh, milk, milk. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, I'm not a tea drinker. No. So that's a, yeah, that's a, it's a difficult one for me to visualize. Oh. Or appreciate fully, anyway. I don't put much milk in my ordinary tea anyway, so the idea of milky almost anything is is not that nice to me. Yeah. Yeah. It, usually you don't like things described as milky. Like chocolate's fine, but... Mucus, milky mucus, no. Oh, like no, come on, anything, anything mucus. That's a bad example. <laughs> no, yeah, no, I think the problem word there is mucus, not no, milky. Def- <laughs> definitely milky, come on. Oh, I hate things when they're described as tea, like, oh, mucusy tea, isn't that <laughs> yeah. horrible? Yeah. <laughs> I think that sounds delightful, it's just a thick tea. <laughs> oh, oh dear. Jesus. Um, the shit, I don't thing. know. That's a difficult one to think of. Um, I think probably... A lot of our cultural identity, perhaps wrongly, is associated with the royal family. Yeah. And yeah. I think a lot of... Because uh, because it's easy to do the comparison between the US and the UK because that's a lot of what's explored in popular culture in TV and film and stuff. And the differences there are very obvious, you know, and have, have been done exhaustively. But I think something that extends to many, many nations is that the, there's this sort of baseline view that everyone in the in the UK like swears fealty to our queen and will kill anyone who <laughs> who speaks against her, you know? Yeah. And that she rules over the country. In reality, it's... Oh, my God, my voice broke there. In reality... Oh, you're right there. Oh, my, inter- oh. my internet's breaking. My voice is breaking. Help. <laughs> yeah, in reality, it's it's a few fanatics that most of the country either don't give a shit or are just... Be- They're just indifferent. Yeah. yeah. Re- I think... Um, some of our some of our words terminology can be pretty weird. I've just immediately googled because I knew there would be a million listicles about this. Yeah, just strange British words, and you know, immediately, damp squib, hunky dory, uh, mm-hmm. chin wag, <laughs> kerfuffle, coldy wobbles, lurgy, uh, <laughs> like easy peasy, plonker, oh. gobbledygook. There's just so many poppycock, codswallop. I'm it's going like to close we, the tab because I can't. It's like we live in a children's book, essentially. It is, yeah. I'm just, I'm just quickly looking through a list of uh, 20 weird things British people do. <laughs> One of them is healthcare is free. Oh, <laughs> that's that is weird. weird. <laughs> That is what, weird. Again, though, that's an American one, isn't it? Because yeah. a lot of countries have free healthcare. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> isn't that weird? God, they can go to the hospital and not worry about being in debt. Uh, hey, oh, awful. This is, awful. This is the most. That? Found a dead man in the street, or oh wait, he's not dead. Better just check his wallet to see if he's got insurance before I phone an ambulance for him, because he'll be <laughs> yes. really mad if I phone an ambulance for him and he's not got insurance, right? Oh, god! This is definitely the most uh, American-centric list I've ever seen. Because number eighteen is eggs aren't sold in fridges. Right, <laughs> That's, it's weird. Right. Fridge people don't put them yeah. outside. Eggs don't need to be kept in a fridge. Like, no. They'd live no. In- American eggs do because of how well, they yeah. treat them. Yeah, yeah, they bleach them white. And- <laughs> oh, God, it's weird. Uh, let's see, what's one But last chickens thing? don't live in fridges. No. no Although true. if they did, maybe the gnomes wouldn't be able to get them as, as easily. That's <laughs> so true. So something to think about. Well, but yeah, then maybe the chickens would die if they lived in a fridge. Uh, yeah, think. but the gnomes wouldn't get them. And no. that's the goal here, yeah, remember? That's, 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 that's what the title <laughs> the of the book was. The of the chicken is not important. The what? gnomes would eventually starve to death. You know, we can always yeah. bring back chickens somehow. I don't know how, yeah. but <laughs> wait till the gnomes die out. The gnomes have some magic. Oh, damn. Actually, no, because we're going to kill them all, aren't we? And uh, I'm just going to read one more from this list. Uh, you all right? Doesn't mean something's wrong with you. They're just asking how your day is. <laughs> oh. oh it's not, right. It's okay. fairly standard. You all right, right isn't a question. It's just a hello, isn't it? You all right? It is, because if someone tells me whether they're all right or not, I don't want to know. I didn't ask you if you're all right. I asked if you're all right. What are you doing? Come on, stop yeah. it. I don't care about your feelings. We don't do that here. 
Uh, bottle it up, son. Keep it going. All right. Who would like to do a ting? Well, I guess while the gnomes are still a, a recent <laughs> a, a, a recent memory, maybe I should quickly do my... And Prometheus as well. Thing. And Prometheus, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so what I've got here is uh, is a list of folkloric creatures from... I think they're entirely from the British Isles in some way, shape or form. Uh, a couple of them are not real. Oh, no. <gasps> and you've got to guess which ones. They've all got either yeah. slightly rude names or just very strange kind of... Uh, strange i guess words like the words i was just reading uh the strange Ooh. british words um the poppy so couple. uh i can i can read them all to you first and then you can uh decide which ones are fake i can even if you need a, ha- a hand i can tell you how many fake ones there are in there uh, but we'll see how you get on okay, okay. bugger <laughs> B-U-G-G-A, a male sea spirit or merman in Cornish folklore that inhabited mines and coastal communities as a hobgoblin during storms. Right, nice. Okay. Hmm. Poo-poo, uh, P-E-W-P-E-W, uh, a frightful old man with an extraordinarily long beard that runs through a spinning wheel and he turns it into gold. Oh. Okay. Uh, the boobry, B-O-O-B-R-I-E. A shape-shifted creature that lives in Scottish locks, often taking the appearance of a gigantic water bird resembling resembling a cormorant or shag, Aww. which is a real a real bird. Uh, Grizzle Greedy Gut, <laughs> one of numerous familiar spirits named by an accused witch under torture. Lovely. Oh my god. Uh, mm. Barnacle Geese, a variety of goose that does not breed or lay eggs, but rather grows on trees. <laughs> oh. Dangly do, a hag derived from sleep paralysis hallucinations in the 13th century, who envelops you in the folds of her sagging skin. Mm. Oh, no. Uh, Milky sagging more. skin. Oh, lovely. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, two more. Bloody bones, a bogeyman <laughs> figure feared by children, sometimes called Tommy Rawhead. <laughs> Bloody bones. <laughs> I like Tommy Rawhead. Yeah. Tommy Rawhead. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tommy, sorry. That's even better. Uh, and finally, Cat Sith, as in the word cat and then the word Sith, like Star Wars. Wow. Uh, a fairy creature from Celtic mythology said to resemble a large black cat with a white spot on its chest. Oh, it's quite cute. So I can give you them again. Yeah, I'll we'll give you the run names again. One by one, but it's hard with oh, mythical yeah, we'll creatures one, one because. I don't know. It's the, like any like these stories like come from such weird places and such weird times that anything yeah. could be true, anything could be false. Absolutely. Mm. This is a I have a couple of guesses. Mm-hmm. I can maybe I'll tell you how many fake ones there are. So total, there were one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven. I, I read eight, and three of them are fake. Okay. Okay. All right. Should we run through them one by one, and we'll give it the verdict? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. yes. So there's the bugger, B-U-G-G-A, a a male sea spirit or merman in Cornish folklore that inhabits mines and coastal communities as a hobgoblin during storms. I think, I think buggers are real. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say a bugger is real. This is probably the sneakiest fake one that I've done. There is such a creature, but it's called a bucker, B-U-C-C-A. Oh, Peter! (laughs) You rooted it up. uh, Yeah, I rooted it up. (laughs) You got us. Very cheeky. Um, uh. It's kind of a blend because there was another. There's another creature called a bugane, uh, b u g g a n e, and I was like, oh, it's a shame there's not a creature called bugger because I could have brought that along, and that sounds fake. But yeah, uh, you made you made a new creature. Well done. You're now part I of the, the, the mythical folklore history. You've invented the bugger. Yeah, but I mean, the description was literally just the same as a, a bugger. But yeah, bugger. Wow. Uh, Poo poo. A frightful old man with an extraordinarily long beard who runs it through a spinning wheel and turns it into gold. I think that's I'll, true. I'm, I'm going to guess that that's fake because that sounds an awful lot like Rumple Foreskin. <laughs> it does sound an awful lot like Rumple Fore- oh, Foreskin. Yeah, Lots that's... of these things are derived from each other. Oh. But uh, that is... It's fake. What? Hey! 
completely fake. Oh, um, other than the fact that, yeah, I did sort of base it on Rumpel Foreskin. Uh, <laughs> but there is no such creature called a poo poo, I'm afraid. Yeah, I mean, I probably should have got it from that. <laughs> such a I? shame. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dear. Um, okay. Actually, no, Next. actually, I'm going to come back because I just remembered one of um, the books that I didn't read from the list of funny book names was um, Cooking with Poo. Oh. oh, what? <laughs> it's not too out the out the realm of possibility for something to be called poo poo. Oh, no, <laughs> no. I mean, there may well be something called a poo poo in in the folklore of different nations, but certainly not in British folklore, as far as I'm aware. Well, that needs to change. So we've already had two fake ones. Ooh. I put them right at the start. So there's only one fake one left. Okay. Um, the boo brie. Shape-shifting creature that lives in Scottish locks, often taking the appearance of a giant water bird resembling a cormorant or shag. Real? I'm going to say it's real. It's real, Yay. the boobry. <gasps> I mean, it's real in so much as it's not real, but it's it's, <laughs> it's a real yeah, folklore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Grizzle Greedy Gut, one of numerous familiar spirits named by an accused witch under torture. Um, It sounds... Real. It sounds too rule doll, but I'm, I'm going to say fake. I'm going to say fake. Uh, that is real. What? <gasps> um, so there was a... Uh, I should pull this up, actually. Because uh, there's a whole list of them, and they're so roll doll sounding. You're right, Mikey. They sound so made up. Uh, here we go. I don't think the witch is named. I think people have a vague, vague idea which which witch it was, but he, uh, it was someone who was tortured uh, or under investigation by Matthew Hopkins, who was the witch finder general, <coughs> who was just essentially this vigilante who went round England calling people Killing witch. women. Yeah, killing women. <laughs> killing women. Uh, and probably a, a few men. Uh, but anyway, a, a woman was tortured uh, and they said, what, <laughs> what are your imps called? Tell us what your imps are called. And she was like, I don't have any imps. What the fuck are you talking about? And then they continued torturing her to the point that she said, okay, here are my imps. They're called Illa Mauser, Pie Wacket, Jar Mara, Holt, Sack and Sugar. That's all one name, nice. Sack and Sugar. Mm -hmm. Peck in the Crown, Grizzle G Greedy Gut, uh, News, and Vinegar Tom. Wow. And those are all words and noises you would make if you were being tortured at that moment. Absolutely. For essentially being our woman. Oh, my God. Yeah. Awful. Yeah. So that is a real one. Uh, barnacle geese. A variety of goose that does not breed or lay eggs, but rather grows on trees. <laughs> There's so much that's wrong with this. Because why? I mean, uh, it's growing on a tree. Yeah. Mm. It's got barnacle in the title. Yeah, trees don't have a great deal to do with with water, mm, true. Mm -hmm. which is where barnacles tend to to favour living. Yeah, um, I'm going to say it's real. <laughs> I'm going to say it's real as well because I feel like it's like, maybe it's like uh, a goose that kind of is bought. No, because it has to be in an egg. Okay, let's just go real. I can't explain it, but it feels real. Barnacle goose is real. What? Yes. Uh, the barnacle goose is actually. <laughs> A recognised species of goose uh, in in real life, I think, based on the folklore. So it doesn't actually, obviously, grow on trees, but because there was this folkloric barnacle goose, someone then discovered a species of goose and called it a barnacle goose. The reason it's barnacle, even though it grows on trees, is because there is a type of barnacle that you find on driftwood that looks like a goose's head. <laughs> so people would find logs that had washed up on beaches with little geese heads on them. And they thought, or some, I mean, some people may have just meant it poetically, but some people probably thought it was real that geese had been growing on that tree. Uh, then the tree had fallen into the sea before the geese had developed. And so only their heads were visible on this, uh, on this log. Wow. wow. Um, it's so strange to have an understanding of, of, of sort of the, the idea that things grow but not being able to put together that, you know, a, a living being yeah. can't grow from a tree. <laughs> yeah. Well, likewise, I think some people used to think that lambs grew from uh, cotton plants. Oh, uh, that'd be cute. I think they called, sweet, it, though. they called the plants like lambkins or something. Aww. Oh. 
It's yeah. very Pokemon. Very, yeah. We've got three left, and there's still one fake one out there. Okay. We've got Dangly Do, which is a hag derived from sleep paralysis hallucinations in the 13th century, who envelops you in the folds of her sagging skin. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to say real. I'm going to say fake, because Dangly Do just sounds too perfect. <laughs> Mikey, you're correct. Oh. Oh. The name that- Dangly Do is completely invented. Uh, the notion of um, a folkloric hag derived from sleep paralysis is not invented. The, the folds of sagging skin was also made up to go with the dangles. But uh, <laughs> there are a couple of uh, different kinds of like hag figures in folklore that are based on things that people saw when they had sleep paralysis. But that one is a sort of combination of made up things. I think by saying wow. this, Peter, when next time anyone has sleep paralysis, you might have implanted dangly do yeah. into people's brains and you've manifested it into reality oh well let us know uh <laughs> you know on twitter or whatever how the folds yeah. are how warm they are or cold moist and um, milky let us know oh mucusy uh, mm. mucusy mm. Mm. uh also i got the i got the do from uh there's a ghostly black dog uh somewhere in i think it might be on the isle of man uh called moddy do he, was, he just lives in a castle somewhere. But, uh, <laughs> so the two remaining ones are real. Bloody Bones is yes. uh, a, bo- a bogeyman figure feared by children, sometimes called Tommy Rawhead. Yes. Essentially the the very oldest reference to any sort of bogeyman figure, like where you would tell your children, Bloody Bones will get you if you don't eat your veg or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, goes back a really long time, actually. And then Cat Sith. It's a fairy creature. I might be pronouncing some of these wrong, by the way, because they're some of them are like Irish and Scottish Gaelic or Welsh. But uh, it's a fairy creature from Celtic mythology, said to resemble a large black uh, cat with a white spot on its chest. So there you go. Aww. Well, Cat Sith was the one that I was going to say was fake because that's a Final Fantasy VII character really? as well. <laughs> yeah, it's it's Cat C A I T and then S A uh, sorry S I T H and it's pronounced uh, Cat She. Yeah, well, it will be oh, she, yeah. actually. Um, she is... Yeah, you're right. She, I always I, called it Kate Sith when I was a kid. Because <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, she is is the Scottish and Irish term for fa- like sort of the whole class of fairies, the whole lot all together. Right. Uh, mm. In Irish, it's spelled S-I-D-H-E, which is very confusing. Because how Excellent. does S-I-D-H-E uh, come out as she... Uh, uh, go, go and ask. I'll tell you how, because other languages conform to their own rules, and what? that's fine. No. And that's okay. Yeah. Explain that to Britain in the 17th and 18th <laughs> century. Yeah. Why are you saying that as she? It says Sid he. It clearly is pronounced Sid he. Sid he. Cat Sid I've been here five minutes, and I can tell you it's pronounced Sid he. Absolutely. Anyway, now you will start saying... Uh, uh, Rule Britannia instead. You will yeah, call that creature yes. the Rule Britannia. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, well, thank, oh. Thank you very much, Peter, for sharing some mythological f- delights. You're welcome. I'm going to add Peter. the uh, picture of the man with the fairy and the chickens to the thread on Twitter. Oh, good. Thank Please you. do. I want to I see him. I, I, would, I would do that, but I'd go all raw body. Yeah. We got it's too much. One more, a little question here, although not really a question. Oh, oh, oh. This one comes oh. from Jenny at Amalthea1980 on the Twitter. And she says, not a normal question, but Quinton will be eight on the 12th and he loves you guys, as you know. Could you wish him happy birthday or something similar? He gets such a kick out of hearing you guys talk to him. Much love to the best boyos ever. So we're, we're just going to shower Quentin in praise for a few minutes, I guess, and tell him he's the best birthday boy ever. How old's he going to be? Happy birthday. He's eight years old, so no rude words, please. Right. <laughs> uh, it's, it's I've a already been now. swearing Sorry, in Quentin. this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hope his mom doesn't um, show him f- full episodes of Poddy. It's, I mean, he's going to grow up to be the raddest, coolest kid ever if he does. But Naturally. Naturally. Is, naturally. Yeah. Well, just the people Happy birthday. love Poddy. It's, Hope you have an amazing day. Oh. Have a great day, Quentin. Are you any in relation to world famous film director Quentin Tarantino? You know, that's yeah, you got the same first name. You have to be related. Yeah. <laughs> same guy. Might be the same guy. He's going to shut everyone's butts down because it's his birthday. <laughs> I'm shutting your butt down. <laughs> Quentin, I hope you have a great day. Yeah. Uh, happy birthday, us, dude. 
let us know via your mum on social media what you're doing to celebrate. Oh, What's yeah. Your, what? You having a party? If oh, you're having a party, just yeah. call Bubba Bab- Looney. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you're going to do some mad stunts on your pedal bike? Yeah. Guy can chips for tea. Oh, it'd be amazing. Go on, so chips. many options. <laughs> fluffy rough, a little bit of fluffy rough. A big yeah. uh, meat face platter on the table. All these oh, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, a birthday pie. <laughs> birthday pie, yeah. obviously. Oh. Martial arts instructions from Dick Machinko. Oh, that'd be yeah. the best. Oh, that like that'd be that's like Johnny Karate from uh, Parks and Rec. Yes. If you com- judo lessons from the succulent Chinese mailman. <laughs> <laughs> All these memes that I'm sure a child knows and loves. <laughs> uh, what, what do kids love now? Um, do you want to do some duos on Fortnite? That's that's a thing, right? Yeah. Do, do you want to do you want to TikTok our Fortnite? Hope you got some yeah. some, virtu- some V bucks. Yeah. I hope you get loads of V bucks, bud. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy going back to school soon because you're going to be entering a war zone of viruses. Have fun. Oh my oh God. God. Don't tell an eight year old that. <laughs> no, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. You, teachers... you won't make it. No, you'll be all right, Quentin. Yeah, you'll, you'll have a nice Just keep washing your hands. Keep washing your hands the way you've yeah, you been told. 20 seconds, mm-hmm. sing happy birthday. Bam, you're done. You're safe. Simple. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. Have a good day, man. Bye-bye. Bye, Quentin. He's leaving Bye, the room Quint- now. <laughs> Bye, Quentin. Bye. That was going so well. And then you scarred it. <laughs> Bloody Bones is going to get you, Quentin. Oh, no. Tommy well, Rawhead. I, th- I think it's necessary, you know, because if kids go back to school and they're too blasé about it, they're just going to it's just going to be going to be awful. Yeah. So just inst- let's, yeah. a healthy bit of Just fear. ruin their birthday. Yeah. Ruin their birthday with a message. <laughs> By the time all. this podcast goes out, his birthday will have passed, so it's fine. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> it's it's right. very true. Sorry, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> ben, would you would you like to hit us with your 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 thang? Yes, I hit you with my rhythm stick. Here mm. we go. It's time for some more weird fake news, everyone. Ooh. Oh, excellent! I've got four news stories here. Which of them are real news stories, and which of them are from satirical news website The Onion? Only you can guess. They're all absurd. Here we go. I'm going to run through the headlines first, and then we'll go through them one at a time, and you can guess if they're real or not. So slightly you ready? reworded as normal, presumably. Yes, slightly yes. reworded to because sometimes the uh, you know being a satirical news website, the Onion, their their headlines are usually they're pretty easy to tell from yeah. the lineup because they're obviously ridiculous. Uh, but these headlines are ridiculous too, and there has been some tweakage going on. So are you ready? Ready. Yes. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> I'm clearly not ready. I just choked. Fake. I think that's from The Onion, that one, yeah. Uh, it was the gnomes. <laughs> North Korean founder Kim Il-sung did not have the ability to teleport, state media admits. Oh. <laughs> I oh. I don't think the government would admit to that, though. That's the thing. I think they'd just go along with that forever. <clears throat> yeah, why would they go back on that? Because it's not like... Um, you know, so many years have passed and now they say, oh, we can't keep, you know, we we can't keep up the pretense of some of the sillier things we've said over the years. Because it was only a few years ago that they said a North Korean man was the first person to land on the sun and he went at night time so that he wouldn't get burned. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was like five years ago. So That's big brain energy right there. That's that's good. It is. <laughs> yeah. Some good thinking. I've... Okay. Yeah. Sorry, carry on. Uh, no, Do you want I, a verdict now or at the end? I'll, I'll go back through them. Yeah, I'll go, I'll back, go back through them. Yeah. Uh, Maryland restaurant owner can't get employees to return because they make more in unemployment. <laughs> oh, God. God, that's that's a sad one because I feel like that's, that's just not an Onion article, but I we won't find out yet. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised by that. Did I miss anything? A man emerges from a 75-day silent retreat in Vermont. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, I know that people have been... Yeah, I, I read something about people who were at places like that and the staff were debating on whether to tell them that things were going on outside um, God. because the whole thing was completely isolated. So there was not really much fear that the germs would get in and therefore... I don't think they were telling people, you need to start washing your hands more. I'm not going to tell you why, but just start washing your hands more. So, I don't know. That's another difficult one. Because it was, I think it was um, Big Brother Big Brother in Germany who had like a new yeah. series going and like they they didn't tell them for a while. Mm. I, I needed to look back into that because I need to figure out what happened there because there was something a bit like, oh, oh, this, this is nice, thanks. You could e- easily see that as being real 
for both of those examples we've just given, but yeah. also it could very, very easily be written as an Onion article. Yeah. Just like, yeah. man wants to know if he's missed anything as he <laughs> you know, emerges from a retreat. So um, mm, we've also... Also got here, woman in China sends 1,000 kilograms of onions to ex-boyfriend to make him cry. <laughs> <laughs> Not the onion, the onion, who oh, knows? It's, it's Probably, it's, it's onion <laughs> I don't know. Somewhere. It's hmm. difficult to say. That's very true. And I'm just picking out a last one. Ooh. Because I feel like we need one final... One final little little fun time. How many, but is he on I, well, the Onion website or is he on Reddit, not the Onion? Who knows? Ooh, 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 who's to say? It's probably pretty easy to tell. Anyway, here we go. Iran calls for prisoner swap with US out of fears for health of Iranians in US jails. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh, God. Well, haven't they released all prisoners in Iran? I think every single prison, or maybe they've... they've got them back now but i think for a time they said oh, we can't really cope with this we're just going to let everyone out uh, that might not be true but i think i read that somewhere or some country has done that i think it was iran yeah um, yeah okay so running back through them again are they real or are they fake oh. first up north korean founder kim il sung did not have the ability to teleport state media admits i think the onion i'm going oh yeah i'm going to say onion because I don't think they'd admit to that. It's real. Oh, oh what? North yeah, Korean down. state media have issued a report denying that the country's leaders have mythical powers, a possible signal that current leader Kim Jong-un is attempting to undo the deification of his predecessors. Oh, okay. Ah, okay. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Real. That's a shame, though. It's I like having one. these weird superheroes about, and it's, all the magic's gone now. <laughs> they're, all so, they're all so real, all of them. <laughs> Next up. Maryland restaurant owner can't get employees to return because they make more in unemployment. I don't think this is real because I think any money that people are receiving, you know, as either unemployment benefit or furlough or we don't know what nation this is talking about. But oh, do you mean Maryland as in the place in Maryland or Maryland cookies? I guess you mean the company. No, I don't mean Maryland the, the cookies. No, I mean... <laughs> I mean, oh. the place in America. <laughs> Why not? Read the wording again. <laughs> Maryland restaurant owner. Oh, oh Maryland get restaurant employees oh, to return. Just wasn't listening. <laughs> oh, Maryland because restaurant make... owner. Yes. Mm. But are, are people in America Can getting you, paid Sorry, stuff? hang on. No, no, no. Hang on. Yeah. I want you to walk me through the fiction <laughs> that you created in your head. I thought you said... Maryland workers or Maryland employees don't want to right. return to work. Oh, okay. right, I right. thought you were imagining a little restaurant inside a packet of Maryland cookies. <laughs> oh, yeah, dope. Maryland restaurant owner. <laughs> no, I just clearly wasn't listening to all the words. Much like when you look at a headline on a newspaper, you just essentially take in four of the words yeah. and hope that you get the gist of it. But uh, <laughs> oh, I don't know. I feel like, are people in America getting like that much kind of... Unemployment benefit. I know what we're getting in the UK, and maybe people in the US are too. But I'm, I'm not sure how it worked in America. But there was like a twelve hundred dollar stimulus check. I'm not sure if that was yeah, only for people, people who weren't working it. or if it's for everyone. But surely it must be people who aren't working because that's a lot of money to dish out. I think mm. if a man and his restaurant business weren't earning a lot of money, I don't think the state would be paying him more than uh, maybe they would. But I'm going to say it was fake. I'm going to say true. It is real. Oh, my God. Mm. Wow. A Maryland restaurant owner said Tuesday that she can't get employees to return to work because they make more in unemployment benefits than in working for her business. Well, what's she paying them? Yeah, for God's sake. Fuck? I bet unemployment benefit isn't very much in, in America. Well, I mean, it doesn't really clarify, which is a shame, but it's uh, here's a quote from her. That's they don't want to come fake. back to work, and I don't really want a restaurant full of unhappy employees, Wagner told oh the TV my station. Oh, God. Just pay, pay your workers fairly. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's yeah. so ludicrous that I just thought it must be fake, because there's no way that people are earning more on unemployment than having an actual job in a restaurant. 
But oh, here we go. Actually, this this might clarify things. The increase in unemployment totals is a key provision in the CARES Act, a coronavirus relief bill uh, implemented okay. to help struggling Americans in the midst of the pandemic that led to businesses across the country to close. Under the CARES Act, Americans who lost their jobs due to the pandemic uh, and claim unemployment benefits can receive an additional $600 per week on top of what they already get from their state. Uh, okay. Um, so it may just be that she can't afford to match that, which no, is understandable, fair, but... Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The quote wasn't great, though. I feel like that was deliberately chosen to make things make her look bad. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Well, maybe if she did uh, relocate okay. to an actual, you know, pack of Maryland cookies, they'd be back in a half. Yeah, week. way cheaper. Real estate is what, like sixty p. <laughs> yeah, tiny. You're, you're okay. It's mobile. Yeah. Go anywhere. I can do it. Unfortunately, I'm the only customer small enough to be able to visit. <laughs> it's true. It is true. But you do eat a lot of Maryland cookies, so it's all right. Oh, I love the chocolate. You know me. Delicious. <laughs> Um, Iran has temporarily fr- or did temporarily free 54,000 prisoners, but I don't think that wow. was all of them. I don't think they let the murderers out necessarily. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Only for the day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a little long. bit fun, guys. Okay, next one. Did I miss anything? A man emerges from a 70 day, uh, sorry, 75 day silent retreat in Vermont. <sighs> it could so easily be either. Just the way that you write it could be. You could do it in a silly onion way, but I know that things like this have been happening. So I'm 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 gonna swear onion, I think. Yeah, I think onion overall, but this has happened. On, on the morning of the twenty third of May, Daniel <gasps> Thorson rejoined society after an absence of two and a half months. He had spent that time in silent meditation in a cabin in in remote northwestern Vermont, where he is part of a Buddhist monastic community. Um, and it says here, Thorson, a podcaster and enthusiastic online philosopher, had also missed 75 news cycles. And so, less than two hours after ending his silent retreat, Thorson logged back into Twitter. Did I miss anything? He wrote. Oh, my <laughs> God. Wow. That would be a hell of a timeline to come back to. I mean, yeah. two and a half months, he will have at least known coronavirus was a thing, True. but might not have known the extent to which it was going to, you know, mm-hmm. how things were going to get. But he won't really have any idea about the, the rioting and so on. So, or protesting, I should say. Mad, mad. Uh, woman in China sends 1,000 kilograms of onions to ex-boyfriends to make him cry. Oh, God. Okay. I, I think that's true. I want to do some quick maths here. Um, 1,000 kilograms, 1,000 kilograms in grams is, oh my God, that's a lot of grams. That shared by the average weight of an onion, which is 170 grams, so she sent oh, him go. Look at this guy. nearly 6,000 onions. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. I think That's because good. it's onions, I don't think this was on the onion. <laughs> I think this is real. I mean, but then again, Ben could have changed it. It could have been peppers. Oh, but actually no, because it made True. him cry. It made him cry. It made him cry. So it has to be onions. Well, maybe it could have been just sad pictures of injured cats or something. That could have made him cry. I'm, I'm going to say this is real. Me too. In a bizarre incident, a heartbroken woman in China sent a thousand kilograms of onions to her ex-boyfriend as a revenge, it says. Yeah. She apparently wanted to make him cry as much as she did after their relationship ended. <laughs> uh. I like that she's been able to quantify the amount of tears she's produced in, in onions. So yeah, this will do Several it. sacks. <laughs> several sacks of red onions were dumped outside her ex-boyfriend's door. He was photographed looking at the onions in a clueless state. <laughs> Yeah. Would you like to see it? Yes, please. <laughs> oh, I'd love to. That is a, a picture for the thread for sure. <laughs> oh, there. There he is. There that he doesn't is look like a, a, kil- a, a thousand kilos. It doesn't, does it? Honestly, um, this is from news website India Today, which frequently features in the Not The Onion subreddit, <laughs> where I get these news stories from. And... Uh, Obviously, the English isn't always perfect, but I don't know if sometimes they tend to sensationalize things mm. as well. I don't know how legitimate a news source this is. I'll so, um, maybe someone can help. Both there already. Which website did you say that was? Uh, that was India Today. Oh, uh, because I, 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 a while ago I did a search on um, what, what, what um, news articles have referenced tweets that I've done. And I've just, oh, I've okay. just re-Googled it and both of them were f- uh, from the Indian Express 
Oh, so I, I was I was curious if uh, it was the same ones. Um, so the first one was Guardians of the Galaxy Rocket Raccoon's real life model Mr. Oreo passed away, and um, <laughs> they referenced my tweet. Um, oh, what the fuck, Oreo the raccoon that was used the real life model for Rocket in Guardians of the Galaxy passed away. Funnily enough, I got to meet him in person a few years back. He was surprisingly down to earth and very funny. Rest in peace, little man. <laughs> <And> that was. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> I don't, they fell for it. I don't know how legit um, the website is it looks i mean it's got it looks actually how many twitter followers you got that's 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 how i gauge it Five hundred thousand yeah. followers that's all right yeah i mean i don't know the sun has a lot of readers true what gonna do? doesn't doesn't make it good how did you search that mikey did you just type your handle into google or so i type at paraboy in quotes and then click on news uh, oh, yeah. okay. okay, that's clever. I know that I once, do that. I spotted something in an episode of uh, Inside Number Nine that was they used my tweet and a few other people's tweets about it in a, in an article. But I've I've never checked for other things. Oh, do you want to do I'm a quick do it check? right now? Yeah, go yeah. on. Yeah, where, where do I get? Where's news? Um, you have to click more on more. News. Yeah. Uh, push square. Oh, a Buzzfeed's reacting to Glow season two. Ooh. Um. Oh, I'm in a bus. Oh, it's mainly just push square stuff for me. Oh. Uh, Let's see what what I said about Glow. Oh, Glow season... Right, okay. It's 15 perfect Twitter reactions to Glow season two that will make you smile and laugh. This is from Crystal (laughs) Rowe, and it's already a fucking awful nothing article because it's just the numbers and then people's tweets. Oh, God. (laughs) And it was my tweet. Glow season two is already amazing, and it's a screenshot of one of the characters with the uh, caption underneath, I'm so filled with shit, there's no extra room for a dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, that did make me smile. <laughs> uh, as well as the inside number nine thing, I'm on a Slash Film article. International titles confirmed that Star Wars The Last Jedi is plural. And my tweet <gasps> saying, because of how the Germans use grammar, we now know that Jedi is plural in The Last Jedi. Feeling dank. Uh, <laughs> that's it that's and what you the, need the other one I'm in is a, a BuzzFeed article that says for everyone who's still scared for li- uh, scarred for life by that one scene in Final Destination and uh, it's it's just me and loads of other people who have taken photos of the back of lorries with loads of logs on them <laughs> saying hey it's a bit scary look I'm driving behind a lorry full of logs oh well, there we go. Um, oh, weird. I've, I've, I'm on another. I'm on an Arabic website as well. Yep. That I've had to translate. It seems to be completely irrelevant. Food and drinks you should refrain from eating before and after exercise. And then it's got one of my tweets in there where I've photoshopped Pokemon onto a Volvic bottle, <laughs> and it says Evolvic. <laughs> and the tweet is: They should have released a Pokemon branded water in the '90s called Evolvic, and. Uh, and I don't know why that's in this uh, this health article. It doesn't make any sense. Don't go out there drinking this 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 non-existent bottle of water. <laughs> yeah, and the rest of the tweets are all just like eat these compots and yogurt things, and it's just like, hey, evolving, huh? That's funny. <laughs> Maybe the oh, I don't know. Yeah, there's okay. no uh, triple jump or vidiot's official Aww. tweets in uh, news articles. Oh dear. One day. Yeah. One day. Okay, finally. Last last one. Iran calls for a prisoner swap with US out of fears for health of Iranians in US jails. Um True. Yeah, true. It is true. It's a clean sweep of real stories this week oh. because the because there's nothing to to, to <laughs> that's worth sati- satirizing at the moment, whatever the word is. <laughs> yeah. Because everything is horrible. Iran has said it is ready for a full prisoner exchange with the United States out of fear for the health and safety of Iranians in U.S. jails during the coronavirus outbreak. <laughs> Damn. There we go. There we go. There we are. Weird fake news stories, but they're all real this week. <laughs> it's not fake news. It's real <laughs> news. Go. Oh my god. It's real news. All real news. Fantastic. And we got one last question for this this pod podcast episode. It's from episode. episode. It comes from Hadi M. No at Hadi M. No on Twitter. And he wants to know if you had access to a cloning machine, what would you clone? Yourself? Dave Benson Phillips? Mikey's <laughs> ferrets? And what would you what would you do with the clones? Oh. Because uh... I I want to answer straight up. I want to answer straight up that I wouldn't clone the ferrets. 
Three ferrets is enough. I mean, four ferrets is enough. Oh, God, I just forgot about one of them. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm just looking over at them. One must be just passed out, almost dead looking. Maybe it is three now. Oh, God. I wouldn't clone the ferrets. That's too much poop. Dave Benson Phillips, it would be nice to have a personal Dave Benson Phillips to like tag along with me. You could sing I'd songs. Love to, uh, I'd love to clone Jeff the Mongoose and just sort of oh. distribute them around oh, various God. homes uh, oh. to haunt people I don't like. <laughs> was Jeff Jeff I was Jeff hmm. a bad haunter or was he a good haunter? I can't remember. I think um, he was just was, omni he was just there, wasn't he? Was he? Just, he was a just bit annoying. for the ride. I think they had to feed him. Uh. Yeah. So it's just like a bit of extra responsibility. It's a weird mongoose in the house. There was a bit where like he followed them to market or something, but he was always on the other side of the hedge and they couldn't see him. <laughs> he always stayed on the other side of the hedge. But they just knew. Hmm. Amazing. Uh, I haven't met my parents' new cats yet. Oh. But uh, certainly if their their previous cats were still around and you know I'm already familiar with them, I would probably clone one of them. And just take one back with me. Oh, that'd be know? nice. Oh, so yeah. an identical version of one of my family's cats that already knows who I am. That'd be quite good. Oh. But I wouldn't clone myself just because of the, the re- you know, obviously, everybody just wants to fuck themselves. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. It's not gay. It's masturbation. What's wrong with you? It's fine. It's okay. <laughs> uh, but the, <laughs> the the philosophical issues of what if my clone murders me? And what if we both think about it and we both try and murder each other? Mm. Um, you know, because if I'm thinking that, then they're thinking that because they're my clone. Then you know, I that I don't want to risk that. That's not that's not what I'm about, right? But someone's mm. got to be the brave person who enters this new world of cloning, who clones themselves, and we got to know what happens. I want it. No, mm. I, it would be fun, but yeah, there's too too many problems with having a clone. I don't, this is assuming they'd immediately be a grown up as well. Yeah, yeah. I see. I oh, assume true. they would clone you at the current age. I could not look after baby me or young me or teenage me or now me. Yeah, no. Mm-hmm. Having me an extra me around <laughs> is just awful. No. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would never want a, a baby me or a young me. I would possibly be interested in having a, a perfect clone of me that I can just kind of. I prefer it as just like an android that looked like me, and I could send it off to do stuff. But you know, I yeah. don't want to actually raise a new version of me because then, as well, if it has a, it's going to obviously by definition have a different upbringing to me. It's going to be raised in in the twenty twenties. And it's not going to be me by the time it gets to my age. So what's the point? It's just going to be competing with me all the time. Uh, I quite like kill it, Peter. Yeah, kill it. it. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> That's the solution. I quite like Ben's idea of cloning a a pet. So yeah, my, my Paco lives up in Newcastle, and I, I never get to see him. So I, I might just get my own Paco. Yeah. Or saying no, that the problem is yeah. that's how. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger movie Sixth Day starts with the company who will clone your pets. Uh, oh my and it ends God. up with them cloning human beings, and one of like the guy who owns the company ends up getting cloned, but the process goes wrong, and he's like a big walking sort of fetus thing. It's oh, oh my God! Yeah, <laughs> that sounds great. Let's do that. Yeah, I think I want a big walking fetus. Oh my God! I just found him. Oh, he's a bit. Oh, he's a bit little bit. He looks like Tommy Pickles from The Rugrats. Oh, <laughs> Wait, let, let my let my let's just let my internet go wobbly for a second. Okay, okay. This is important. Oh, oh there he is! Oh, he's got one ear. He yeah, did. he's only got one ear. He's got the same color T-shirt and the same hair as Tommy Pickles. Wow! I don't like when he's that. first bought. I don't know why he's put. I don't know at what point he puts a T-shirt and jacket on. But when he's first born out of the sack, he's just naked. It's really horrible. Oh God! Oh. Yeah. Oh. Awful, awful. Was that all the questions, Michael? That, that's them all. That's the lot. Mm. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for listening. Thank you for coming along. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed it. We know the world's a bit scary and frightening at the moment, and everybody needs distractions, but that doesn't mean we can all bury our heads in the sand. We need to address and talk about the things that are happening if we want things to change. And for that reason, the wonderful... Wonderful pod squad who have donated this week very kindly, whose names we're going to run through in a second. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna make a, a, a donation to a relevant 
Black Lives Matter charity this mm-hmm. week. Yeah, we are. I think actually just to add on to the point of don't bury your head in the sand, I think it's quite important to realise that the fact if you're able to bury your head in the sand about these issues, that's like kind of quite a big thing to realise that a lot of people don't have that option. They live with this every day and it's a mm-hmm. genuine fear and a genuine thing you have to think about. Um, so like... Obviously, I know it's hard to come to terms with it, but it's it, you've got to face it from full, 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 like facing forward, and you know, do some research, like, and read into it, and kind of understand what it is these people have been going through for generations, literally generations uh, beyond. Mm. It's hundreds of years. It's systemic and it's awful, and it needs to end now. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah, hundred percent. Mikey, who's our first set of pod squad? A little bit of Monica. Killboy mm-hmm. loves Babs. Beal new cannon. I was a succulent Chinese meal. Gooey bug spittoon. Tidiots. Man, what Ben tied up in a hoodie. I do like that. That's, that's, I, think I, just, I hope he's, a, I hope he's doing okay. <laughs> he's, just, I'm saying he's still just walking tied up in that hoodie <laughs> to this day. Oh. Javier Ramirez. Vidiots in Vegas. Thank you again for the generous donation. And Lord Brotovich. Also, podiddly squadiddly dough. Garlic and chips for life. Ask him. Mr. Black, where Willem's Willie will win whatevs. Kevin from Con. Ah, Millie Lemons. Awesome Fox 42. Cheese Fondue Penguin. Sexagin Tuple non And we can just ditch Petrel. Petrel. I don't know DJing what's midi. I quill Netherlands horn, Peter's Polish furry porn, Windy Miller, Billy Ray Bumpus, Alan Claw, R.I.P. George Floyd, Knickknack Paddywhack, Give a Dog a b- Borner, Penile Dementia 489, Uncle Fester's Throbbing Cock, and Sean Anthony 96. I should actually thank Peter's Polish furly, pu- fur- furly? furry porn for the generous donation as well. Thank, much appreciate thank it. you, Peter's Polish furry porn. Furly- We've had a few additional ones, Wonky Boys as well in there. Oh, to course. the wrong address. Oh, yeah. Oh, let me just. Oh, 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 oh there it is. Oh, it, oh, it, oh. Wait, we start with Keith Chegwin's cock and balls. Unofficial vidiots pod comb. Desi does bon 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 bonds. And, and Trun- Trunter's Muggy Hooray! Fantastic. Just a reminder that to donate is three pounds or more to get a shout out. And you need to go to streamlabs.com forward slash podiots donations. We will no longer be checking the old donation link of Vidiot's official. That is just for live streams. It's streamlabs.com forward slash podiots donations. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, very much appreciated. Thank you all. Yep. Absolutely right. Mikey. Hi. There's some kind of shop and stuff, right? Oh, I, oh bloody hell, I forgot all about that. He we got some new bloody merch out. You know what I mean? And if you... E bust us some monkey's blood. E, if, I, if you want some monkey's blood with your merch, just stick it in the notes. They'll spray it full of it. Yeah, we've we got new merch out. Um, if you go to store.yogscast.com and head over to the vidiots bit on there, you'll find three lovely, exquisite, delightful new items. We got a po- two podiot shirts and a podiot mug. If you like podiots, my but my god, we've got the items for you. So please do go check that out and give them a look and maybe give it a cheeky order if you want. But if you do decide yeah. to. And let me tell you, we got a very special code. If you use code VIDIOTS at checkout, uh, you will get 10% off everything in the Yogscast store. That's absolutely everything. So you could get get yourself a Podiot's mug and a shirt and also, I don't know, just fucking a uh, uh, poster of a tank. There you go. Yeah, why not? Why not? Why not go and do that? Post some, do that. Tank. Post post some, some tank. tank. Post some tank. So that's store.yogscast.com. You can also check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, all.com forward slash official. Sorry, it's a little burp there. Sorry, everybody. Oh, that's okay. Um, all our VODs and the podcast also goes up on YouTube. Uh, the VODs, including the big uh, Vidiot's Reunion 2, right? That's what we called it? Yeah. 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 You can go watch that whole thing. It's up there now, I believe. I don't think it's been taken down for any copyright violations as far as I'm aware so hopefully that's still up there uh, we stream sometimes on twitch.tv forward slash video it's official we'll always talk about it on Twitter and Facebook and that sort of that's those that sort of places uh, so do pay attention there if you're interested in in catching us live at some point and uh, yeah as I said streamlabs.com forward slash body donations if you'd like to uh, if you'd like to join pod squad thank you very much Mikey where can people find you 
at Parrot Boy on the tweeters is the best place to find me. That's where I post all my nonsense. And I see what what fun awaits you if you follow me today. Oh, I, last thing I put up was a lovely video of a ferret wedding. So enjoy that. Ah, <laughs> delightful. And Peter, where are we? We are at Team Triple Jump on Twitter, YouTube, and other places too, where we're doing videos. That were a little bit, a bit like what we used to do on Vidiots. Uh, we've got Rules Boss and we've got Main Menu where we do cooking. We've got Prove It. We've got Worst Games Ever, of course, and other things too. It's video gamey over there, though. Not not just silly and videotic. Mm, absolutely. Go check us out. Go and ask. Go, go and ask us. Go and subscribe. <laughs> Finally. Uh, leave us an iTunes review or a review slash rating on your platform of choice. It helps something to do with Al Gore's rhythms. Do we have a final question for this week? Question mark. Put, there's your there's your question. Put um in the chat, everybody. Um, um's in the yeah, chat. Can we get some ums in the chat, please? <laughs> yeah. Ums in the chat. Fantastic. Thanks for listening, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your week. Hope you're doing well. Stay safe and Black Lives Matter. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. All right. See you later, boys and girls and others. All right. Uh, t- yeah, see you. All right. Okay. Yeah, close the door off. Close the door after you. Ta-ta. Right, see, you. see you later. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.